Welcome. My name is Natasha Sherman, and I am your host. And my guest today is Seward Johnson, who is a sculptor, artist, and also the creator of The Grounds for Sculpture. Welcome. Thanks a lot. I am very happy to be here. I'm delighted that you're here uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of them is um, that you created The Grounds for Sculpture, which to me is a little piece of heaven. It is one of my favorite places on the planet. And, uh, and then all the amazing sculptures, and then, of course, your work as a sculptor. So um, I'd like to start a little bit just starting with you as a sculptor. Like, what inspired you? What had you start? And then, you know, your journey. Well, I, 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 we were living up in Cambridge, Massachusetts when I started, and, um, and I was painting. And I was painting, well, my wife and I would go out in the, uh, on Cape Cod and paint and, and, um, and in the country. And then I went to um, the, uh, a Brattle Road, um, there was an adult education center. Mm -hmm. I went and took, uh, they, they had um, uh, painting courses there. Right. And, and they had uh, they had models there, and so I, I did some work uh, on on figure painting with them, and I was doing it, and I was saying to my wife, you know, this is just so much fun, <laughs> it's so it's so uh, d uh, delicious, but I don't feel like I'm working. I had already, uh, frankly, been fired from my family company, <laughs> and uh, so, so. Uh, and I was used to work, I, mean, I wanted to suffer a little bit more, mm. or I wanted to at least, uh, I wanted something with more resistance to it than painting gave me. And so she thought for a while and, uh, and she clipped out an advertisement for a sculpting class and said, did you ever think, uh, you know, he said, she said, I, you seem to be artistically responsive and and everything and you and you used to work on a farm and no machinery so maybe this is something that would work so I went to this class signed up for it and I, I went to it but I only stayed for half of one class really I got so excited that yeah. uh, that I walked out uh, making some excuse I can't remember <laughs> what got myself a studio, got myself a model. Oh, and I was working with styrofoam. What excited me was styrofoam was a, a substance that I could carve and not have to build an armature for, as you would for clay, mm -hmm. which required uh, knowing how to weld and, uh, and uh, things like that that I didn't know how to do. All I had to do was carve and shape. Mm. And so I got lots of blocks of styrofoam and, uh, and the model, and, um, and I just started to work. Now styrofoam, as I worked, oh, and I did a, it was a nude that was going to be, um, uh, and life size. I, I started writing life size, so. Uh, and obviously styrofoam leaves a rough surface Right. When you shape it. So after I'd gotten the general shape, the idea was I'd smooth a very liquid plaster it all and fills the pores. And then, uh, and then it gave a rough, uh, rougher, smooth shape, but rougher than I wanted. So then I discovered something that was, um, it was some, had uh, plastic in it, but it was a uh, something you could polish down. Mm. So, on top of the plaster, I put this stuff, and could even make it. It looked like a piece of marble then, and so it was wonderful because it was very light, and but it took me ages. Um, the the first model I had was uh, someone who was not embarrassed at all uh, being in the nude condition and uh, um, and so it was a good start right. to uh, 
uh, but she had to leave, and I, and it was taking, it took me months and months to, to really get the hang of what I was doing. So you got your wish, though. You you got something that provided resistance. Yes, I got the <laughs> resistance. I got the and the, and the, the second model was shy, mm. and she because of that she, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen people, when they're at cocktail parties and they're nervous, they tuck their feet underneath like uh -huh. this. Well, she tucked her feet underneath, you see. Uh -huh. And um, and so I cut off the legs of my piece and captured that, uh, that, oh, uh, that nuance. That nuance. Yeah. And so I was sculpting what was inside as well, right. as, well as what was outside. And uh, I think How that's... Many, I, I'm going to interrupt you here. Yeah. How many years ago was that? That was in 1968. <laughs> wow, so you've been doing this for quite some time because you're still sculpting. Yeah, but I was I was already 38 years old, and um, and so that's unusual, isn't it? Oh yes. Well, I, excuse me. I used to work for the family company Johnson Johnson, and my uncle tried to tell me what to do with my life, and I told him what to do with his advice. <laughs> and we parted ways. <laughs> so you've been ever since. Yeah. Well, no, I was uh, pa painting. I didn't know what right. to do with myself, actually. And yeah. so it was very interesting because uh, almost, yeah, almost 10 years went by in the mm -hmm. meantime. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so I was very, so I had this piece that was finished. I was going to cast it in stainless steel, polished stainless steel. Mm -hmm. I already had envisioned it from the beginning, and um, I took it to a foundry in Brooklyn, and they finished, uh, and they called me up, and they said, we can't believe this is your first piece. Uh, uh, and I said, well, I'm sorry, but it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they said, do you mind if we put it in the competition? I said, be my guest. So they did, and I got a call uh, saying that I was a finalist, and um, in the uh, Design and Steel Award, and when I come to the, uh, with the other finalists, uh, come to the uh, Plaza Hotel in the Grand Ballroom there, and, uh, and it was U.S. Steel that was doing it. And so I said, fine. I came there, and it turned out I won the top prize with 11,700 entries, uh, yeah. and, uh, and it was my first piece. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that? And then I want to ask you about your different periods, because there's so much we can talk about. Yeah. But what's interesting about that is, like on the one hand, you could actually thank your uncle for firing you. Oh, yes. And, uh, and then you kind of went through, you know, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then to have found this talent that you have and have spent all these years now you know, creating, it's quite extraordinary. Well, I'm very lucky because it, it, I, it, I've been lucky a, a number of different times mm. during my career. Things just turned out right, to turn out right again. That's pretty and extraordinary to have yeah. won out of 11,000 and yeah. something entries. I know, and never, I never won another uh, thing. <laughs> after, it wasn't necessary after no, that. exactly. Yeah. So I want to ask you, you did a series uh, called Beyond the Frame, and we're going to be that seeing... That was my second series. Okay, your first series was... My, my second, first series was uh, Celebrating the Familiar, which was familiar people doing familiar things, or, uh, whether it was gardening or... Uh, uh, mowing the riding lawn, a bike. Or riding a bike, mm -hmm. all these different things that people do, and it was having them do it, and that's what I was most famous for, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, beyond the frame, I was well known in museum world for, uh, but not in public world. What was the concept of be beyond the frame? Well, beyond the frame was. I originally started the first series because I thought people were not going out into nature enough. This is when television came in, people were becoming couch potatoes, and I, for some reason, I i don't know, I must have been a big, uh, but anyway, I, I, I thought that, uh, I, and they weren't going to parks. Uh, there was mm. a, a crime wave in, in the 70s that people were frightened to go to parks. So my idea was that I put 
and this was again uh, uh, celebrating the familiar, I would put people who looked responsible to be uh, presences in the park, mm. to be witnesses or to be decoys and pull people in, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was my principle, and I sold them like mad. Uh, across the United States and Canada, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know, you know, it was in the 70s, uh, I started in 68, it was in the 70s, and uh, people needed people because they, they could not understand abstract sculpture, mm -hmm. and so I gave them a relief. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have to look at 19th century things in order to see th things they knew. And right. so, and so. It's interesting. I'm going to stop you here for a yeah. second because we're going to look at some images. Yeah. And you can talk a little bit about them and you can kind of explain whether they were. Um, which, uh, which series? Right, very okay. good. So let's take a look. So this one is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was in the middle of the first series. Uh, but I, uh, this is the awakening, and this is down, uh, was down in Washington, D.C., right behind the Lincoln Memorial in, in um, uh, Haynes Park. And, um, and it's called the, uh, I've said the awakening, but it's a giant awakening from a long slumber under the earth, and, and he's got his mouth open, and he, he looks hungry, and you're not <laughs> sure whether you should. Uh, and you know, uh, they they bought another one of these out in uh, Iowa, and um, and all the children got in the mouth, and I, <laughs> and so I said on command he closes his mouth, <laughs> and so they scampered. They, yeah, they scampered. That's so powerful. Yeah, and, it, it's wonderful. You know, it you can't resist being engaged with that. Well, thank you. I'll tell you who else liked it was the head of Italy, Berlusconi. He, he bought one, and uh, he bought it for the G8 meeting in Syracuse, Sicily, and, uh, and then moved it up to Rome for, uh, a, uh, to start a new Biennale up there. Wow. And so, and okay, he, we're going to look at the next image. Oh, yeah. Okay, here are the three fates, yes? This is a re more recent one of mine at the at Grounds for Sculpture, and the three fates are uh, borrowed from uh, again. This is this is from the series uh, on Beyond the Frame, and it's from Redon, who's a post-impressionist, and uh, they're three of the ugliest women I've ever seen, <laughs> and I made them eight feet tall to make them even more frightening, and then I added a Macbeth. Um, Thing of uh, Shakespeare thing of the tripod, and I put in remains of um, of uh, oh, reptiles, and, yes. reptiles and human parts. <laughs> it's cooking there, uh, just to, to make them even more. And you know, as children come through the park, I always <laughs> suggest that maybe if they want to get rid of a couple of them, we'll put them <laughs> in the pot. <laughs> well, you know, and again, beyond the frame, that's you've combined things and force people to look beyond yes. what exists. That's true. That is what I did beyond the frame because most of those were framed paintings and the limbs would extend beyond the frame and I had to complete the, the figures. So I had to go beyond the frame and sometimes the extensions were a lot of fun because it was my territory to do different things with. Which is great. As the artist, you have the freedom to do that. And there's something very playful in, in some of those things. Yes, I did that especially because I tried to be very honorable to the original artist and, and repeated it digitally perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I tried to be an artist beyond the frame. Yes. And that's why it was called, the series was, the, uh, the, the Cochrane Museum did it as a, uh, a thing of beyond the frame, right. that was where it opened. So, but ag again, this was, um, I was carrying out, and I did this because of grounds for sculpture. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I said that the Impressionist painters were the first one, civilized people to celebrate man going back into nature to enjoy himself. Mm. And so I wanted to celebrate that celebration mm. and repeat it and have the guests, uh, the visitors of um, Grounds for Sculpture have the other guests, uh, the characters from the uh, Impressionists who were the original people, uh, they share nature together, you I see. I think that's great. And I have a question to ask you. But this one is, oh, this one is. This is the boating party by uh, Renoir, and, uh, which I call Were You Invited? Because the, a good part of the people there were invited because they were Renoir's guests. But there were four characters in the back, myself included, uh, and three other sculptors who weren't invited, and, <laughs> and on our table there are many more bottles of Renoir's wine uh, <laughs> that we were drinking, and um, and so, uh, it, uh, and that's why the invitation to to the unveiling party of this said, were you invited? <laughs> and so it got very complex. You know, one of the things that I was going to ask you, but you've pretty much answered it in a sense, is when you are doing your sculpting, you have the viewer in mind. You're oh, already engaging. Oh, exactly. I, I, you see, this, this is my thing about displaying artwork. Uh, the viewer's moment uh, of having art mean something to them is the most precious thing in, in all of art. It's more precious than the first idea of the artist to me mm. because that's when the art does a service uh, and, and they have a visceral reaction and, and it gives them something, it, it gives them a gift for their life. And, uh, and this is what, if I have a, um, whatever you do when you leave something. Legacy. Legacy. Uh, I, I want it to be uh, that I have managed to give more people uh, that, that moment where art has serviced them mm. uh, and changed their life and improved them because art has that power to do that. I know that. And you know, it's funny because when you talk about, um, maybe we could look at the next one, but uh, you know, when you talk about being in nature and, and then the celebrating and then the, the viewers celebrating, there's one where they're, um, I can't remember the name of it, you kind of have to go through some bushes to get to it and they're sitting by the water and there's a naked woman and there's a woman oh. bathing. And Dejeuner, the third yes, one. and and so it's it's like such a surprise. You yeah. know, you go through this little kind of opening, and there they are. And, and that's there what is everything is supposed to be in grounds of sculpture. Everything's supposed to be like an Easter egg hunt. And, yes, and, and you, it occurs that way. Yes, and and uh, it's very important because if you see art from a great distance and you walk up to it, you've been it ruins it as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. You must happen on it, and, mm. and it must be at a, a, a way that's going to do the most for you mm -hmm. as you happen on it. So you, I must put myself in the place of the viewer in, in a, a thinking up the whole thing. And it's very obvious at the grounds for sculpture. You know, I think the first time I met you, I said the place occurs as conscious, and I wasn't quite sure that yes. was the word, but it's, it there's conscious. something very it intentional and, uh, yeah. It's and really I'm and I'm trying to do something with that. It's very interesting. You, uh, you know of the collection of, of Barnes in Philadelphia. This is an important art collection. It's worth about twenty-three billion dollars, <laughs> and um, and so they have done things that were against his intent uh, in, in managing that. And it's very interesting because. Uh, and I made friends with the man who's in charge of that, mm -hmm. and I call him my natural enemy. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I said, I have to learn what Barnes didn't learn, and that is not only have my intent on 
what we've discussed about about giving people this ability to mm -hmm. train, but I have to make it so that when you have a temptation in managing this park later to go against that, that you're going to you're going to predict that and you're going to tell me about it and I'm going to figure out with you how we can get around that. Mm. So I'll put some flexibility in my intent to make it last longer. Mm. And so this is something that I've been. I just today had a meeting with the curators on this because they had gone against my intent on, on a show by mistake. They did not realize my intent. And, uh, and it, it's very, uh, uh, and we had the most wonderful time. And, uh, you know, and uh, because I have, for instance, uh, ple uh, instead of, they had do not touch on everything. I t had them take off, do not touch off. I love that. Yeah. Yes. And, and I check the signs. Can I? Because some of them just dry you, compelling you want to touch. And well, sculpture is a two sense um, yes. art form. And there are some of them that still would be dangerous to touch right. uh, for the patron, or it would be dangerous to the sculpture right. to touch. And I've given them so many years to get rid of those. I wanted to, to look at, um, we just uh, saw Marilyn, and so that's part of the icon. Yeah. Uh, well, the two, uh, uh, Marilyn's both icon life size. And then uh, monumental. Uh, monumental, skin. yes. Here, tell us about this one. Well, this is um, the uh, Sailor Kissing the Nurse on VJ Day. Uh, it took place in Times Square, and this is a picture of my large piece in Times Square, and uh, and it's 25 feet high, and um, uh, 26 with the base, and um, it's um, and I'll tell you uh, uh, about. I asked permission to do this at the beginning from Time Life AOL, and they said no, you can't have permission, and I was disappointed, but I. Then I heard that somebody else took a picture at the same time as their photographer, Eisenstadt. There was somebody else, who took, uh, Lieutenant Jorgensen, who took a picture from another angle, and it was in the Library of Congress. So I went and got that <laughs> and did my piece, awesome. and I put it in Times Square. And uh, at New York Times, uh, they uh, did a big kiss-a-thon around it. They gave all the men white hats and <laughs> the women uh, roses. And uh, and so uh, I and then the New York Times did a big spread on that. Mm -hmm. So I cut out the big spread and sent it to the chairman of the board of <laughs> Time Life AOL. And I said, uh, I'm planning to build this now, 25 feet high. Would you please donate fifty thousand dollars to my <laughs> um, project? And uh, and they, I got a nice letter back saying. Uh, uh, We've given away all our money this year to art projects, but we wish you well on your project. My uh, my uh, 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 legal right. aid in uh, pro uh, in uh, thing uh, told me you got them, <laughs> yes, and you did. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so I wanted to wage war then on mm -hmm. on this uh, thing and. Uh, I said, which is the worst image going? And he, by all means, uh, there's uh, the um, the image of American Gothic is the the very worst. The worst in terms of in copyright the, uh, copyright issues. What, uh, yeah, but it wasn't copyright in this case. It was California image law, and he said that 2,200 cases, they're milking it for millions of dollars, and they're pre and they're preventing artists from doing anything you see and you so know, I'm going to interrupt you oh. here because we're going to be running out of time oh, yeah. one of right. the things Sorry. that I think is really significant about what you're saying is earlier you and I were talking and you said art builds on art yes and therefore to say no you can't take this image they were and ruining build on the it. whole history of art mm. they were truncating it with this new law and so uh, it uh, it was uh, I felt it was my job to uh, take it on <laughs> and uh, challenge them. Yeah, to challenge them, and and uh, and, it's, and I have uh, had a good time doing it. I have uh, th this goes on 
on and on and on. <laughs> and I, I, I'd use six of these programs to tell you the whole thing. <laughs> so, so I want to ask you, in this last series, the monumental scale, yeah. what inspired you to take it to that scale? Well, one, uh, there's a couple of things. One, uh, I was advised by a New York Hill firm to uh, put, uh, donate all my sculpture to, to a uh, not-for-profit organization. And, uh, and so I, di I did, and it was the worst advice that I ever could be given because um, what it, what it meant, which they didn't tell me, that I couldn't sell to my usual sculpture. So, mm. and I had sold in the 80s and 90s, I had sold about $34 million worth of sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I used all of those proceeds to, to fund the uh, Johnson uh, Atelier mm -hmm. uh, School of Sculpture. And then it was against the law for me to sell to my usual customers. Mm. So the only things I could sell was to not-for-profit or to cities or to, so big pieces sold to other to entities that like that. So that's what drove it in that direction, which was not the happiest reason to mm. do things. Uh, but I've learned since that there is a way to do it, and I'm learning how to do that, which I, uh, as soon as the economics turn around, I'll be uh, doing the same thing as I used to do in a different way. Great. And do so, you have a favorite piece? Well, you know, I was just uh, uh, asked that by a magazine article, and I said, that's a dirty <laughs> trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean of mine, yeah. right? They asked me which one in the park I liked the most. No, and I finally a... said, mine, what a mine. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm an artist. That's a mean trick. Uh, but uh, no, for my own, yeah, one of mine I do, uh, it's uh, three guys play, playing cards. Um, two of them are cheating the other one. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing poker. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a place for a visitor to come sit down and be the fourth hand, oh. you see. And, and I don't know if I call it fourth hand or what, but... Uh, Where is that piece? Well, I know, uh, well, it's in a couple of places. Uh, my cousin's widow, um, Betty Johnson, has one in Hopewell. There's one down in Key West at the Reach Hotel. I don't know, there's a, four or five of them. Other, mm -hmm. No, there might, uh, might be up to six of them in other places. Seward, you know what I was just told? We are out of time. Oh. So we are at the end of this mini journey. I'm sure we could do many more. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank, thank you for you. your artwork. Thank you for the grounds for sculpture. I will thank you for that forever. Oh, and I love you coming there, too. Thank you for Everybody joining us. Everybody else who comes, too. <laughs> okay, thank you. My name oh, is dear. Natasha Sherman. Thank you for joining us.